two, one, on one with the grim one, the black metal party that never stops. And all night long, I am your host with the most, the master of disaster, and Joan Rivers of black metal, the necro sexual. And joining me on this morbid talk, we have the one man army behind the black and speed metal project, Hell Ripper. James McBain, how the hell are you, baby? I am doing fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm grim. <laughs> Keeping it grim. So how the hell do you feel now that you have this blistering new black and speed metal album out? It feels good. I mean, I recorded it this time. I just finished recording it around this time last year. So, yeah, it was a long wait to get it out with the delays and delays and things like that with the pandemic and whatever so yeah it's good it, it felt great to finally get it out there after a 10 month wait or something <laughs> well worth the wait as good things come to those who are patient and what do you do when you're waiting you're at home you have your guitars maybe you have your recreational products or some iron brew which i hear is quite popular in scotland <laughs> it, it is very popular in scotland indeed yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> um yeah i just kept on writing new stuff uh, yeah working on the next album i'm almost i'm about halfway through that right now so hopefully there shouldn't be too long of a wait for that one this is one-on-one -on -one with the grim one so what that means is every chance i get with my guests we select one album that holds a special place in your heart so i want to know mr hell ripper what album are we gonna dig deep into yeah so i chose peace sells but who's buying by megadeth um one of the first metal albums that i really got into it was the along with and justice for all it was the first thrash thrash album that i heard and yeah that was the start of my journey into thrash and then extreme metal and to what i'm doing now i guess what was it about peace sells that really sunk its hooks into you um, I just love the, the aggression of it. I think it's, um, I've said this to, I can't remember I said it's to someone else, but I think Peace Sells, it's still my favorite Megadeth album because I think it's right in the middle of like the, the speed metal, like chaotic debut album, like The Killing Is My Business. And it's, halfway in between that and rust and peace like with the technicality and the complexity and things is right yeah it's just the fine line right in between there which i like the songs are catchy as fuck the the, the guitar solos are ridiculous yeah it's just yeah it's a great album and being the first album one of the first albums that i heard of course it's got like a nostalgic uh, feeling as well which i guess helps it and the memory is a sharp tool. So if you can recall, take me back. Where were you? What were you doing? What was your first impression when you heard that album for the first time? I believe I heard it was either, I, I can't remember the exact uh, memory of hearing it for the first time, but it was either the title track or Devil's Island that I heard on YouTube. Um, and yeah, from there I was digging around i probably heard uh, probably it was on a, like a related video to and justice for all or something and i was just exploring the youtube um, this must have been in around 2009 2008 9 10 <laughs> in one of those one of those years uh, i my memory's horrible so uh, regarding time times and things but yeah how old so, yeah. were you back then or do you not remember so <laughs> i was I would probably say I was probably it was probably between thirteen and fifteen years old that I got into it, um, and yeah, it was either Devil's Island or Peace Cells, the title track, and I remember just loving it and exploring more. And then I went on to listen to like Rust in Peace and the rest of Megadeth stuff, and yeah, one of my favorite bands to this day still. Ah, just a lad discovering Megadeth on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And the rest is history. 
And of course, Megadeth has had many lineups over the years, but Megadeth 1.0, the same lineup that was on their debut album, Killing Is My Business, and Business Is Good, and also on Peace Sales. He had a little bit of a jazz connection there with Garl Samuels yeah. and Chris Poland, and that I think really made for that spastic, progressive weirdness. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, Yeah, it kind of set them apart from the others. Um especially that first album where it's everything just sounds crazy, like time wise and the rhythms and things are just, yeah, they're like, you're, yeah, they're very complex. I would say like when you try and look at how to play these songs on guitar or something, it's quite a challenge. <laughs> Did you learn the bass line for P cells as soon as you heard it? I didn't. I, I never owned a bass until couple of years ago like 2018 or something i never owned a bass i had never really played bass until i started hell ripper and i just borrowed from friends to record so um i have learned the bass line since though um i think it was probably the f one of the first things i played when i got uh, my own bass or when i first started like playing bass a bit more uh yeah it's an iconic bass line one of the best and it's really fun to play as well which helps because you are a multi-instrumentalist what is your favorite instrument to play and why guitar, guitar <laughs> was, uh, it was my first instrument that i learned to play and it was the yeah it's just what i find easiest uh i can i feel like i can uh, get more out of it than other instruments like my creativity uh levels are higher like on guitar like i I feel like I'm better at coming up with riffs and things or song parts on guitar rather than any other instrument. When was the first time you discovered the need for speed? The need for speed. Yeah. I, it would be for P cells, I guess. Uh, yeah, probably the exact same story, uh, P cells and, and justice for all. And from then I got into Slayer, uh, Anthrax, all your thrash things. Um, and at the time that um, that I was discovering these like the these old metal bands like Megadeth and Metallica, like the Legends, it was around a similar time that there was like a new wave of thrash happening and a new wave of traditional heavy metal. So I quickly then discovered bands like um, Evil, Havoc, Warbringer, uh, Enforcer, Steelwing, and things like that. So yeah, everything happened at around that time my whole metal journey <laughs> kind of happened all at once really when it rains blood it pours <laughs> <laughs> and so what do you think mr hell ripper makes the perfect thrash metal song perfect thrash metal song um i don't know it's everything there's so many different elements that um when used in the correct context can make a perfect uh, thrash metal song. But I think uh, a song that I would use for, as an example I, that I think is the best thrash metal song would be um, Angel of Death. I mean, I think a lot of people would agree with that. It's just, it's fast, aggressive. Um, the middle, the middle part of the song is one of the, the best pieces of music ever written with the, the riff and things and then yeah you've got the crazy solo it's just aggressive yeah if it's aggressive and the riffs are good you've got you you're off to a good start i think certainly a blistering fast metal band that you've been able to produce but there's also the black metal element it's got a little bit of coding of filth so where do you take your your black metal inspiration from the black metal inspiration is really comes from like the first first wave and anything related to the first wave so you've got your uh um like the venom bathory uh, um merciful fate as well like that if people call that black metal i know a lot of people don't but i consider it um part of that wave um yeah celtic frost and all that kind of stuff just the first wave kind of aggressiveness um is where my black metal inspiration comes from <laughs> Indeed, that's a that's a familiar uh, noise if you listen to Hell Ripper. <laughs> totally, riding high on that first wave. 
And I've always considered Venom to be the first black metal band. They coined the term. They definitely coined the look and the attitude. Are you of that same mindset or where do you fall on that age old argument? Yeah, I think I would agree with you. Um, yeah. So when you want to blow somebody's mind and you want to rip out a slab of some old school or maybe just some really obscure shit, what's your go to? Oh, some obscure kind of shit. Um, I'm a big fan of artillery um, in, mm. in, in particular. Their squad, yeah. Yeah. My favorite album would be By Inheritance. That's one of my favorite thrash metal albums. Again, uh, it it's, yeah, it's like kind of like a more complex master of puppets, I would say, with a, like Bobby Blitz on vocals or something. That's how I would describe it. Um, but yeah, that's not a very popular album. I mean, I'm not too sure how obscure it is, uh, but it's not well known. So <laughs> I'll go for that. Yeah, artillery. Something is thrashing in the state of Denmark. <laughs> totally brutal. So you have this new album out. Let me ask you, what's your favorite track? It's like choosing a favorite baby. But if you had to choose one darling from The Affair of the Poisons, which one is it and why? I would say um, it would be between two of them. It would be between the opening track, uh, the title track, um, and the closing track, The Hanging Tree because they kind of bring something new to the to the table uh, in terms of sound. Um, the, the Affair of the Poisons kind of has an extended kind of um, bridge section with some slow moshing or mid-tempo mosh riff with some somewhat atmospheric lead guitar underneath. Um, and the hanging tree is kind of, yeah, it was is it's the last part in particular is inspired by like Merciful Fate and Iron Maiden kind of things in terms of the rhythms, and I don't really use those elements much, so I was happy bringing something new to my to the Hellripper sound and that they worked out well. Um, yeah, I would say those two it would be in between those two. Indeed. And of course, we're talking about Peace Cells, the classic <laughs> album by Megadeth. What's your favorite track off of that hellacious record? My favorite track is um, Good Morning, Black Friday. Uh, it's just, yeah, crazy. Um, the intro is great, builds up. Builds up with a crazy guitar solo, intro solo, um, an amazing uh, scream or a high scream by Dave Mustaine straight into like a thrashing uh, song. And the lyrics to that song are cool as well. They're like a, about like a serial killer. It's kind of, and it's in 1986. It's kind of almost like a early version of like what would go on to be like cannibal corpse lyrics or something. Right. Yeah. I think it was right around the time of the night stalker killings, which I just watched on Netflix for a little Netflix yeah. and kill session, painting the right. devil on the wall. I just watched that last night as well. Yeah, great movie to watch before you go to bed, especially if you live alone. <laughs> totally brutal. You know, my favorite part of Good Morning Black Friday is... What the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, that's a great part. Then straight into that, the, that long scream. Yeah, Mustaine's <laughs> got some pipes. Another personal favorite, and I hear that he finally returned it to the playlist live back when concerts were a thing but the conjuring a little song about black magic that perhaps yeah. had some real world repercussions that spooked out mr mustaine from performing for a couple of years more than a couple of years <laughs> so yeah. uh there's always that kind of a cult spooky appeal when that stuff is rooted in real life occurrences yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's cool. I never knew. I didn't know he brought it back. So what else are you listening to these days? New, old, whatever. Enlighten us. What's on your playlist, Mr. Hell? What What's on my playlist? I was listening to the latest Warbringer album, uh, which came out last year. Great album. I've been listening to the latest Midnight album. Um, what else? Butcher. Um, big fan of those guys. Uh, killer speed metal band. Um, Butcher with an umlaut above the U for extra speed metal points. Um, um, what else? Umlaut makes them go faster. Exactly. 
Um, yeah, so those guys. Um, what else? I've been listening to a lot of Devil Master. Philadelphia's uh, own, yeah. Great band, uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, loads of uh, stuff like uh, the Dark Throne, uh, the punk era, the Circle the Wagons kind of stuff, uh, Dark Throne. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got to love a band like Dark Throne. They're like Picasso with all of his different eras, everything from the progressive weird death metal to the totally cult black metal that basically invented the second wave, you know, characterized the entire genre to the later punky stuff. Yeah. The newer album, which is more like traditional heavy metal. Uh, did yeah. you ever think that you would be on the same label as Dark Throne? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool to be. I mean, yeah, they're one of my favorite bands. And of course, the, the, the punk albums in particular were a big influence on my musical taste and in me starting Hell Ripper. So yeah, it's, yeah. There's, yeah, I've got nothing else to say other than, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Indeed. Well, crazy times and crazy risks for those crazy times. But of course, Hell Ripper is just one tool in your arsenal of musical artillery. So tell us about some of your other musical projects, baby. What else is going on? Yeah, so the ones that I've actually done something with that are still going, I've got Lord Rot, which is a more old school death metal band. Uh, Influenced with it by the Swedish sound, so you've Dismember, uh, Necrophobic, Entombed, all that kind of stuff. Um, and my other band, um, Lock Howl, is like a post punk black metal influenced post punk band, uh, somewhere in between Joy Division and Typo Negative, I would say, something sound wise. And yeah, I'm working on a few other things like uh, a couple of crust projects that i need to get finished i haven't i still i'm they're still in progress um but i hope to get something done with them soon just been focusing on the hell ripper stuff lately so yeah i've had no time to get other projects done but yeah hope to have a, f a release or two out this year um with various projects and hell ripper but yeah who knows i don't really have a grand plan <laughs> um when things are done they're done um i don't really plan things out in advance which maybe i should <laughs> what else on the horizon are you stoked about um so i'm really excited to get the new hell ripper album out um like i mentioned before i'm, a, I'm around halfway through the writing process i have three four song three or four songs finished and another four um, about halfway there and yeah it's sounding quite cool so far I think I'm trying to expand the sound again with bringing some new elements there's quite a I think this one's got more of a traditional black metal um, influence in terms of like note choices and things like that so yeah I'm excited to see how that turns out when I record it um, hopefully it, it doesn't sound horrible <laughs> a ghoul can dream well i wish you all the fortune and fury as you record the next great hell ripper album and until then all you heathens and hell raisers can feast your ears to the current hell ripper album the affair of the poisons check it out on peaceful records totally brutal and mr mcbain i want to know what do you want to say to all the heavy metal freaks out there who are watching you thank you for watching thank you for supporting what i do uh Check out the rest of the Necrosexuals uh, interviews on YouTube. And yeah, keep supporting Metal. Check out the new album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the excitement. I can tell it's palpable, baby. Well, Mr. Hell Ripper James, thank you for going one on one with the Grim One. Peace sells. And you and I are both buying that one, baby. Such a great album. I love to talk to anyone about, but especially you, another fast and furious musician. And this has been another Dispatch from the Dark Side featuring me, the Necro Sexual. Check out Hell Ripper. Thanks for your time, baby. I will see you in the pit. Cheers. <laughs>